Colossians uh, chapter 1, we're going to uh, consider several verses, starting at chapter, um, or verse 13, uh, down through verse 22, and we're going to, we're going to kind of make a broad, uh, a broad sweep over this, and here, here's what we're looking for in this text, is that God the Father has invested all of the kingdom, its power, that he is the, the, the fellowship that is the, the administration, like a, he is, uh, as used in Ephesians, he's the, the fellow of the kingdom, the fellowship of the mystery. All of the resources, it's all in Christ. Amen. It's all in, in him, in, in, a, in a man. So like in the days of Joseph, in order to survive, you had to go to the man. You had to go to him. There wasn't any safety or there wasn't any resources outside of him. There isn't today. There's no safety and there's no resources outside of Christ, outside of the man, Christ Jesus. God's designed it this way. He's put it all in Jesus. So we're going to start at Colossians 1 and verse uh, 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime aliens, alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now you can see the intent. This is, there's, like a, there's like a laser focus in this text, that what God is doing, it's all in Jesus. So if you have the Son, you have life. Amen. If you have not the Son, you don't have life. Amen. It's all in Christ. So everybody that's in Christ is complete. Everyone that's not in Christ is incomplete. It's, it really is that, that cut and dry. The, that, that's what Paul is, he's being, in, Paul's being moved by the Holy Spirit here. This is not a private uh, opinion or a personal perspective that we just read. This is an inspired revelation this is what God's doing. It's all in Christ. You notice all that in him, by him, for him, through him, in him, his body, his flesh. It's all in Christ. Amen. Now we need, to, we need to hear this word. This is, why, this is one reason why Paul, you know, inspired by the Holy Spirit didn't mean that Paul wrote these things and had never thought of them before. That's not the way inspiration works. He was, he was moved. The, the Holy Spirit was teaching him. Jesus was teaching him. The, the Father was commanding light to shine into Paul's heart, to give the light, this light of the knowledge of God in the face of Christ Jesus. And so Paul, in writing these things, he had intention. He's writing for the Colossians knowing that they needed to hear this. He had a burden for the Colossians, not only for the Colossians, but for all the churches. And it came on him daily. So this is not a hobby for Paul. This is what he lived for. He was, he was wholly given over to this, just like the temple and the tabernacle. They were wholly given over to God. Paul was wholly given over to God. And this is a revelation that God gives to us through the Apostle Paul. And this, so David or Paul had this intention of, of focusing the, the Colossians on Christ, of turning their, fixing their eyes on, on this, this man, Christ Jesus, because that's where all the grace is, all the peace is, all of the, the resources of the gospel and of salvation, they've all been invested in Christ. And then, see, 
now you hear Jesus' words, come unto me. You see what's behind that? It's all in him. So if we come to him, then we have everything that God's given, everything God is doing, we have because it's in him and we're in him. So when we come to Christ, when a person, when any person comes to Christ, they are coming to everything that God is doing, everything that God is giving, because he's invested it all in this man, in Christ Jesus. So we need to we need to hear this word. I mean, it, any place in Scripture that you read, that every place in Scripture we need to hear. But there are there are certain parts of Scripture that are like more foundational than others. Just like a just like a structure, you know. The there's a foundation, then there's the walls, the 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 roof and rafters, the windows. There's different parts, you know, that make up the whole. So if you think of Scripture as a as a structure then this is at the foundational level. There's, everything else is built on this, is who Jesus is. Amen. So when I say we need to hear this word, it's not just a matter of the words moving our eardrums. We need to hear as to understand yeah. the word. That's what Jesus said, that you cannot hear my words. Well, he was speaking to them, and they were hearing physically. They were hearing his, his words, but they weren't hearing yeah. his voice. He said, because you cannot understand my words, is what he said. So we need to hear this. We also need to receive. That's part of hearing, is receiving, is that the word, it is, it's an engrafted word. When the word. When the word comes to us, the word comes with a purpose. The word comes with a work to do. This is not a document. The scripture is not a document. It is quick and it is powerful. He has exalted the word. And Jesus said, it is they that testify of me. And so hearing the word has to do with understanding. Hearing the word has to do with receiving. Receiving the word has to do with keeping it. Not keeping as a doing, keeping as retaining. Is that you don't let anyone take it from you. Keep it. Like the, like the seed that's sown in the ground, the ground that keeps it is that it's not washed away. Not washed away with water. It's not taken away by the birds. It's kept and when it's kept, then it's going, to bear, it's going to grow roots and it's going to grow up and it's going, to bear, it's going to bear fruit. So we need to think on these things. See how all these things tie together? Hearing and understanding, uh, receiving and keeping and thinking about these things. See, the fellowship with the Lord, this, it, this directs our thinking. We fellowship with the Lord, it directs our thinking. Jesus so often, he addressed how people think he says that you know he'd say something about leaven and then he'd say why are you talking about about not having bread you know he was directing their he was working with their thoughts in their thinking so we need to love this word we need to take heed to this word get take heed to this more sure word of prophecy that is where we that is get taking heed to it is fighting off things that hinder you from taking heed to it and, and with purpose, like Jesus said, he set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. We set our face steadfastly to think on these things. As Paul said, Amen. Let the, we want this word to dwell in us richly. I was thinking about how, um, how vast the word of God is. It's like a, it's like a table that we, that we pull up to, to to be nourished by. And at this table, it's not just like a single course. This, this table is a table of abundance. And as the Lord leads us, like where to sit down. <laughs> you know, there's places, the book of Ephesians and the book of Romans are, this is like, these are like places at the table that many of us like regularly sit down at. You know, we, we, we think of Romans 8 as one of those regular places that you, <laughs> you sit down at Roman, Romans 8 and it's, it's nourishing, it's refreshing, it's enlightening. You receive from this, this table at the at the the Word of God. <clears throat> so if uh, a person is really robbed to, to think of the Scripture as like an historical document and to be, to be restrained by thinking of, of cultural context and, le and original language yeah. and uh, it's all these things, these, these are weights. These are like blinders <laughs> to think of the Scriptures like that. God keeps His Word. God preserves His Word. Yes. I keep going back to the thought, don't let anyone take this from you. You think, well, how can someone take this from me? 
What you're talking about there is very important. We are surrounded by things, ideas, yeah. and and words and doctrines that would cause us mm -hmm. to have to relinquish mm -hmm. the truth as it is in Jesus. And that's where the truth is. It, and that's what the scriptures say, the truth as it is in Jesus. And so that he is the truth. Anything that deviates from what Jesus has revealed and what the scriptures have told us is to be is to be immediately rejected yeah. in preference to the truth. That we, that's how we love the truth. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, we've got some we've got some very serious talking about culture. I call it unculture. But the the things that are commonly received in the time and place where we have been set are set directly against what God has proclaimed. What Brother Tony brought up, that we're a holy people. Yeah. People are taught not to think of yourself that way. It, it just totally violates the, the scripture. So um, it, this, is a, this is a word to strengthen us and, and tell us we know where the source is. We know who said it. Cleave to it Amen. with purpose of heart. And don't let anybody steal your crown. Amen. 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 Brother Mark. One of the ways we do this is we have it hid in our hearts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like a word of I hid. Amen. 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 So there, there's a more excellent way than to think of the scripture as a road map for life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a more excellent way than to think of the, the scriptures as being an instruction manual for life. There are instructions in it, but the, the revelation of God the person of God, the purpose of God, the son of God, the will of God, that is what undergirds the instruction. So the instruction like skimmed off the top without the purpose, without the foundation, the instruction, it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a wandering star. It, ha it has no purpose, no direction, no grounding, no compass. The instruction is empowered by the revelation. And this, this Colossians 1 text is like, is like right at the heart of the the foundational revelation this is what god is doing not god not this is not what god wants to do in your life this is what god is doing come to him Amen. see that's too low of a view to think what god wants to be a part of your life no god has to give you life god is not he's not on the outside wishing to be a part of of your life we're alienated men are naturally alienated and enemies in their minds by wicked works now why would god want to be a part of that what we have by nature we have to be delivered from god has to give life and now something something starts then now something's getting done brother given yeah, god god wants us to be part of his life that's right I, this, this is a default way of thinking, this text that you read here. Everything's traced back to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you take this phenomenon that we're experiencing now in Florida. Now, you can, you can, if you think of that as a judgment that came from Christ, you think of it completely different. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, you pray for people that are there, like if we're in Jerusalem, you know, Jesus told the saints what to do when Jerusalem was coming. But you, you approach things completely different if you trace them back to God. So whether they're real or wrong, you've got to trace it back to back to Christ and seek to please Him because He cares for His own. He's already yeah. He's already told us that He cares Amen. for His own. Yeah. So I deeply appreciate this that you're saying here. This this is a this is the way we default to thinking this way yes. when, you're, when you're living by faith. Amen. 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 Seth. God does not want to be a part of your life. You want to be. You should want to be a part of His life in heaven. Amen. That's right, Brother John. You know, if you mentioning people having this perspective of guide and roadmap and things of that sort, we can't approach the scriptures in just thinking of this world only. Like this can't be our focus. Is just this environment because the scriptures are actually. In Helping us get ready for the world to come. Amen. Ready for the return of Amen. Jesus. Ready for the judgment, judgment seat of Christ. These are things that are like coming. It directs you to higher realms of thinking. But if you come with it, with the aspect of 
me having a good life here or how to live well here, it kind of waters it down quite a bit. When you're thinking in terms of what's coming and how those scriptures like how I'm living is actually ready me for something much bigger up ahead, scriptures are much more profitable. Yeah, amen. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. If, if we hold to, uh, it's, a, it's a law mentality, what m must I do? Uh, it, it actually diminishes the value of, of Christ and what he did. Yeah. To say that Jesus came, humbled himself, and died so that we could have a road map. <laughs> Jesus died, a person of the Godhead came and died so we can have two cars instead of one. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Whenever you say it like that, it puts it in the proper perspective. You've got to see the cost and then reason on what was purchased. Yeah. Amen. Brother Tony. Yes, you know, I was thinking that there's a lot of scripture that actually instructs us in the holy living, how to live godly, and, and yeah. you know, so these kind of, just kind of thinking. But this this scripture here really ministers to our faith. Uh -huh. This is this is like this is uh, uh, goes directly feeds our faith directly, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's because it's centered in Christ Jesus. And it's only that, it occurred to me, it's only when we're, we're targeted or we're centered directly on Christ as our faith perfectly strengthened and fed. They, it's got all these affirmations about Christ. We have redemption uh, in his, by His blood. And these kind of, that's, that's really what uh, bolsters your faith and strengthens your faith. That's right. Amen. Isaiah, Brother Rick. I'm sorry. I'm thankful for what you said about the historical Jesus, the Jesus that lived 2,000 years ago. The trouble with this kind of view is you, you can't really fellowship with a historical figure. You can learn lessons from a historical figures and things they did well or things they did wrong you're trying to avoid, but you can walk in fellowship with a living Savior. And so in every way that I speak, we don't want to leave the impression, first off, that Jesus is not a living person and that, we're, that we can't that we're not in fellowship with him. And so yeah. I'm grateful for what you said yeah, because yeah. The, way a, the way a person speaks does either encourage fellowship with Jesus now or discourage it. And so thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is most yeah I was thinking about what Brother Tony said about this ministering to your faith. These, and you brought out these things are revealed. So when we see this revelation of Christ here, then we can see the purpose in things. We can see the real world. We can see what's really going on. It's not these things here. We can see the unseen. And so then we can cling to God with purpose of heart then. Because we have a purpose then. We can we can hold on to. Our anchor is sure. It makes our hope sure. Because we can actually see what's going on. God revealed what he's actually doing. And, and we're getting to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, Christ um, said just before he died that He'd come to glorify the Lord. He finished his he's finished his work, and he had glorified his Father. And even in the midst of tribulation and trials and disasters and things that we that we see with the human eye, there's glory. That God's glory is in yeah. this. It's behind hey. it. It is for us to purpose to see that glory, yeah. it, it, even in the face of this what seems to be an awful disaster, that's the way we perceive it as humans, because we're not, you know, we don't have that spiritual insight to see that glory, but it's there. This is glorifying God. It's for us to find that. Amen. 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 I want to just say one more thing. I just want to perfect what I was saying there. If I think about Abraham Lincoln, I'm not drawn into fellowship with Abraham Lincoln while I'm thinking about it. But when I am thinking about the facts of Jesus' life, I am drawn into a living fellowship with him Amen. as I think about it. And that is the difference between history and the living word of God. Amen. 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 There we go. Yeah, the, it's a road map. It depends where you're going, you know. John said if we by this we know that we love God and we do, we, we can love God and keep his commandments. But this that we're talking about here, this gives you, this is the reason you keep his commandments. The keep, the, keeping the commandments doesn't suit you. Well, I, I won't say that either. 
they reveal your they reveal your heart. But then he gives you a reason. He gives you a reason not to just attempt to do them, but to actually do them. Yeah. Yeah, of course, my, my intention in mentioning those things is, is not to just throw them completely out the door because there are instructions, there's guides, there's a I'm talking we're talking about the a big perspective, a big a big picture, that it's not only that. It's so much more than that, Sister June. Uh, he didn't give us a roadmap. He he is the way. That's right. And in the Amen. way, all of the all of the details of what men <coughs> refer to as the roadmap are not only manifest, but but that's what happens. Because you can't walk in the way and err. He's that highway of holiness. Though a, a man, though a fool, will not err therein. You can't. You can't get in the way without being of the way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So three perspectives on, on this to wrap this up and to, to move on here. Isaiah spoke of those who tremble at his word. And David said he stands in awe of his word. And this is of the, of the old scriptures. What can be said now of the, of the whole? And David said he rejoiced at his word as one that finds great spoil. And so this is this is how we we come come to the the scriptures, is uh, in awe and trembling, not not trembling as as in a, a fear that causes you to recoil, but trembling as that this is from this is from God. It's a a, a trembling as as a, a, a reverence, a holy godly godly fear. So the the Father in heaven has drawn up this this whole purpose that's been been given to Christ he's drawn it all up so that you have to go to Jesus to get any of it Amen. you have to go to the man Christ Jesus there's one man between God and man the man Christ Christ Jesus have everything is in him everything is by him salvation is not only in him salvation is him he is become our salvation Salvation is not something that he has purchased and gives away. Salvation is in him. So if you're in him, then you're safe. If you're with him, then you're guided. If you're in him, then you're quickened. See, but if you draw away, you're leaving all of that he has and that he is. So it's about the man. It's not, not something that is, that is doled out or something that is packaged and left for, for somebody to come get without involvement to him. <clears throat> nothing, there's, uh, nothing in Christ is like an insurance policy. That if you, know, you just got, you got the, the paperwork in, in place and the fees are paid and the, and the lines were signed and now ev you know, everything's, everything's fine. The gospel is not a commodity that can be warehoused or transported. And that, it might sound silly to, to, to say that, but if you think about the implications of the, of the way the gospel ha has been presented and the way people think about the gospel, that is the sum of how people have, have thought. If any gospel that doesn't require the present living Christ Amen. is a departure. It's a departure from, from the gospel. So the gospel is not a commodity. It's a man. <clears throat> Go ahead. This is um, not, you know, what you just said may seem uh, simplistic, but we have a whole religious system that's built on it. We do. That, um, right. have, they, they believe they can go out and they can, they can plant churches anywhere they want. Yeah. Yeah. And they can guarantee you success yeah. to people yeah. to show up and then grow and prosper. Well, See, yeah. this is built on what you right. just said. Yeah, this right. is built on something that they think that they can package up and they can sell and they can make a profit. Amen. Amen. You know, the people that, that think of the commandments, they're, they're thinking in terms of like the Ten Commandments. So well, those are really commandments. But think about commitment like be holy. Yeah. Sin not. <laughs> yeah. Set your effects down things as well. Yes. All right, now once you take those seriously, that's when you go, that's when you, you become really you've got to go to Jesus. Yeah. Because if, if you look at it just as a duty to be done, Jesus told us if you've done all you've been commanded to do, lock, stock, and barrel, 
you're still unprofitable. Yes. <coughs> so even if you think of keeping, you do the commandments have to be kept. But salvation involves infinitely more than that. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the way the Lord, I mean, we, we should be able to, to, to make these kind of conclusions now. Because God has put everything in Christ, this is his manner. This is his way. This is, the, this is the divine way. You know, Peter says we're partakers of the divine nature. When we, when we see and, and fellowship uh, of, of, of this in Christ, we're, we are partaking of the divine nature. The Lord does nothing, gives nothing, that can be received and partaken of with, outside of him and, and the Son. Everything that he does requires him him to do it now see in the world we have contrast to this where an architect could build a building and never never visit it again and the people that live there or work there or produce there don't know anything of the engineer and the architect of the, see that's only happens in the world god doesn't work like that everything that god is in he is in it's his work and he's there brother gene yeah scriptural illustration of this and also illustrates what Brother Ricky was saying earlier about fellowship with the Lord is uh, where you have uh, Saul of Tarsus ravaging the church on the road to Damascus Jesus meets him Jesus shows up right there and intervenes and then he and then Jesus shows up and commands Ananias to go over and lay hands on the man and give him his sight back and then later Jesus shows up in Jerusalem and says to Paul just as you've testified for me here you'll also testify for me in Rome and then later he sends his angels he sends an angel to, to spare Peter in chapter 12 he sends another angel to Paul on the boat so he's right there involved in all these things he's personally there or a personal representative of his sent from him is there involved in these things it occurred to me you know fellowship in Christ you really can't have fellowship in Christ unless you fellowship in his life. You know, unless you fellowship in the way he thinks. You fellowship in, in what he's done, what he's doing, that you have fellowship with that. You, uh, even in this world, if you have fellowship with someone, it's, it's, it's an act of things. It's, it's yeah. fellowship with them in some way. It's not an abstract. That's why you can't fellowship with the historical yeah. figure. You can't, yeah. you can't. It's a dead thing. But see, yeah. with the dead, the only, this is profitable to us. We can actually know we're a fellowship with Christ Jesus. Yeah. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 2. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, a covert from the tempest, as rivers in a wa of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. This is a man. All of this protection and provision, it's a man. Not something uh, that the man gives. It is the man. It's in him, in this fellowship, in this life, in this knowledge. It's being in him. So I am as safe as much as I am in him. That's a covert. And I am alive as much as I am in him. I am as nourished as much as I am in him. I am accepted as much as I am in him. It's all in him in Christ. So the gospel is the work of, a, of the man, Christ Jesus. He is doing it. What Brother Gene just mentioned of these, those instances in the book of Acts, of the Lord doing these things, giving these things, he's still doing it today. The Lord hasn't withdrawn and handed it over to someone else. He hasn't retired. He says that when he said the, uh, it is finished, it, the work on earth was finished. He's still working today. at Ephesus he commended them for what they did but they left their first love yeah. uh -huh. See, that's what you're talking about yes. and that, yes. that undid all the good things that, that they did they tried them and said they were and things they did were good mm -hmm. yeah. but we're not but not cleaving to Christ the purpose of heart yeah. that undid Amen. all the good they yeah. did Amen. Yes. See, the, go the gospel is that, that purpose of God, that the will of God that's prospering in his hand. See, it's, today it's prospering. You know, we, talk, we mention a lot about all the, the abuse of the Lord's work and the abuse of the scriptures and the preaching and all that kind of stuff. And above all of that, 
His will is prospering in Christ's hands. This is not the, the, the existence of these departures doesn't mean that Jesus is failing. Doesn't mean he's, he, that somebody has the upper hand. The will of God is prospering in Jesus' hand. It is. The, it involves Jesus judging certain things. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he, he's still, everything's in his hand, so he can, he can drop a person like a hot potato. Mm-hmm. He can do it. Brother Ricky, number of time. Fellowship is an active thing, and it is an intentional thing. That's right. See, being in Christ. Now, now, while you're in Christ, if you're going to profit from what it means to be in Christ, you have to abide in Christ. That takes a little further. That's right. See, you have, you have to abide in Him. I, I have a relationship to my wife. But we can sleep in two separate beds and get upset, and she's still my wife, but I'm not in fellowship with her at the time. See, that's not, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about being in Christ. This isn't just having a relationship. This is being in an abiding and active, continual fellowship, which requires intentionality. Amen. And we're glad to give that, too. <laughs> Quick to say that. We're glad it's that way. That's what we want. Amen. Amen. Really you know, the way this works, you know, the, uh, the, the more we know about Christ, the more we find out about what he's done and what he's doing and all, and all about his person, uh, the, the tighter and the greater our fellowship is. See, so it's, it's, it's actually it's a living thing that we can actually be drawn into this fellowship. The more we find out about Jesus, if you don't know anything about Jesus, see, you, you can't really, uh, you're not aware of any kind of fellowship much. Mm-hmm. You know? there's, there's, a, there's a part of us that's not in fellowship with Christ. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. So you have to, that's why you have to keep that keep that under. But that'll, that'll be great. And uh, people emphasize roadmaps of what you do, it all has to do with the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all these emphasis have to do with the body. But God, he doesn't give you an A, B, C, how to subdue your body. He just says, subdue it. Yeah. Crucify the flesh. He, he, but he doesn't step, give you steps on how to do that. Yeah, that's right. Amen. That, that's worked out in, in fellowship. Yes. Yeah. So Jesus, Jesus is the heavenly steward. He told he told parables about this. You know the the, the talents and the the master's gone away, and then there's a day of reckoning. And how? To, what did you do with my? See, Jesus is the steward. All things have been given over to him, and he's so he is when he he's giving grace. It's for the sake of the Father. He sends the Spirit. It's for the sake of, of the Father's house. And all of this that he's doing, he convicts, he's, he leads, he empowers, he teaches. All of his doing is for the sake of the Father. It's his work. He, Jesus is the, the steward of all of this work. That's why the Father's put all things under him. Amen. All things have been put under him. It's for the work that Jesus has been given to do. All things are put under him. And so he he's able to fully carry it out, fully work it. It's going to be completed. He's going to wrap it up, and then he's going to hand it back to the Father, and it'll all be, it'll all be perfectly completed. There, there, there won't be any, any flaws, anything to redo, anything to undo. It'll all be done. It, he's done all things well, and he is doing all things well. Duties are all in-house activities. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Remember, the Jews were, you know, really got upset about this, and they were upset because he was a man saying this. Right. A man was saying he's the way, and they were thinking, "Who do you think you are?" Well, he's try- he tried to tell them who he was, and they didn't want to receive it. But Jesus is the way, yeah. not not showing the way, although he do- he does do that, but. The way is showing the way. Amen. It's in him. He is the way. The way is follow him. That's right. <laughs> it's not an instruction. It's follow him. Yes. And see, that's why, that's why methods, an emphasis on methods is so dangerous. And that's why it's actually offensive. If a, just think about it this way. If a, if a marriage, if the paramount... Um, uh, governing issue of a marriage was just a method what does that do 
Right, right. What what does that say about the marriage? And what does that what does that make the marriage look like? It, it's not a marriage. That's like a contract. You know why we have contracts? Because people are not trustworthy. Because people don't do what's right. People don't trust each other. So you draw it up in a contract. That's not a marriage. And that's how this that that's what this whole thing is about in the end. The the bride is gonna marry the bridegroom. The bottom line, he doesn't say now that the main thing is to live a good life here. He says the main thing is you be a chaste virgin for Christ when you leave here. All right, that change, this changes now how you live. That's right. You got to keep communication with. You're the bride. To, you're part of the bride to be. Yep. But you're part. You're living communication with the group. With the group. Jesus is for the Jonathan. Fellowship with Christ is when you desire that fellowship. You think in terms of together, you know, be together. But you think in terms of stay together, because no matter how many times you're with Jesus, you never have that feeling like you've overstayed your welcome, or that Christ, you know, needs to go for a little bit. You need some time to yourself. You just don't think this way. You think I am with you always, right? That's just that's just the mindset. And so, in views of eternity, that's what we all we want. We want to have that togetherness for all eternity. There is no time apart or anything like that. That's the effect Jesus has. You come to him, you want to stay with them. Yep. Jesus is also the nourishment. He is. He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. He's the nourishment. We can think of it as him giving the nourishment. He took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave. Yes, he does. But what is the bread? It's him. He is the bread of, of life. Spiritual wisdom is this man. He's not, he's not the professor. He is the wisdom. He's made unto us wisdom, sanctification, righteousness, and redemption. He is made unto us wisdom. Wisdom is a man. It's not a body of knowledge. It's not a, it's not a creed. It's not an education. It's a man. He is wisdom, the wisdom of God. Yes. Called in the fellowship of his son. The son is the is the big part of the fellowship. Yeah. It's not like a constant two-way thing. It's not, not exactly like that. You read the Gospels and the disciples, they, they dialogue with Jesus, but it was very small compared to, <laughs> compared to his input. So fellowship with Christ has right. more to do with what he says than what we say. Amen. Yeah. Yes. We're partakers. Partakers, yeah. that's partakers. right. Yes. Partakers. He is the shepherd. He is redemption. He is the life. Christ is, he is made unto us redemption. Remember when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Think about what that would have uh, for, for the, the people to hear that. These were Jewish people. So they're very familiar with the redemption and sa sacrifice, offerings, and these kind of things. And so when, when you hear, when they heard Lamb of God, and then John the Baptist points to a man, now that a man had paid redemption, uh, redemption could be the money, redemption could be paid by, by money, or redemption could be paid by a lamb. But when John the Baptist says, behold the lamb of God and points at a man, that had never been seen before. See, and, and everything about, he's the firstborn. He's the, he's, everything about Christ is unique. He's the only begotten of the Father. No one else at any point, at any time, is what Jesus is. Not, not in this foundational sense. Not in this foundational sense. He is redemption. <clears throat> so blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. And there were, there were a lot of occasions as Je when Jesus was in this world that people were offended by things he said. They did not like it. They argued against it. They, they just up and left. These are hard sayings. They plotted against him. They said things like, have any of the rulers believed on him? You know, as if they were the, as if they were the, the benchmark standard. You know, everybody should do and think like they uh, do and think. People still think that way about the religious yeah. teams also. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
Remember, Judas betrayed Christ, right? Yeah. But he had to leave Christ to do it. That's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, people were the they were offended one time because they he didn't observe the tradition of the fathers. They were offended. He didn't by their standards he didn't keep the Sabbath. You imagine? Just think of how brass this is that they they're accusing the Lord of the Sabbath for not keeping the Sabbath. They're they're accusing the fulfillment of the law for not keeping the law. You see how absurd that actually is? They didn't know who he was. They were offended. They were offended at him. Man was made. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made, made for man. <clears throat> now, of course, they were offended also the, that that thou being a you being a man makest thyself God. He he is. <laughs> and he said, uh, "I am the Son of God." They they got the import of that. Yeah. They you being a man makest yourself God, and he he spoke the truth. What he said was was the truth. So here's um, this has already been introduced, but the the opposition to this, and Paul wrote about this a lot. You know, in in the book of Colossians, the letter to the Colossians, he he warned them against philosophy. Yeah. Beware of the philosophy, lest you don't be spoiled by the philosophy. So there there's an opposition yeah. that militates against this this right. god godly way. Right. Where God puts everything in a man, the world doesn't. In fact. You know, people, the world will, will rally around a cause and the world will join a movement and the world will fight for the greater good. But what does, what does the world think of a man with all power? They fear him. He's got to be taken out. We've got to, we've got to have a distribution of power. Why? Well, people like Hitler and Stalin and, and other dictators have given reason why power in this world in men needs to be distributed you know so we have the different branches of government and it and so that filters out you know it filters out the abuse the abuse of power but that's the system of the world yeah. brother gene the people would gather him when jesus cast out legion came to him and said leave us leave us they didn't want somebody so powerful around them yeah yeah, that's right who was that uh, kingdoms <coughs> that nebuchadnezzar had a dream about None of those kingdoms, so far as we know, had anarchy within the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But that God's introducing, see? Yeah. There is a kingdom in which there is no anarchy. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But in, in a, lot of, a lot of times, or a lot of places in our time, there's, there's hardly a thought that that is even possible. That people, I think there are people that fear one world government more than they fear God. There is going to be one world government. That's the time I'm looking forward to. I've noticed that act, that people actually find assurance in a position. The, the, the official position, not one that they carved out, one that somebody else carved out. There's, there's some assurance in that. There's a level of comfort in that, well, this is, our, this is my position. Because it's our position. And people also find confidence in being in a system. I'm talking about a religious system. I'm not talking about business world or some, something like that. I'm talking about a religious system. People find confidence in belonging to a system. And it's like the, the old mantra, safety in numbers, and that many people couldn't be wrong. Oh, yes, they could. Yeah. Ask Noah about how many people could be wrong. <clears throat> it appears that people find, they find comfort in tradition. There's some level of safety in tradition. It was good enough for my dad. It was good enough for his dad. It was good enough for the generation before that. And it's good enough for me. Yeah. They, find, they find comfort in that. And what this, what all of these things, here's a residual to all of that, is that the person, the people, actually unplug. Yeah. That's right. They're able to be less involved because the system takes care of all that. I don't have to. The position is already established and cut out and defined. I don't have to think about it. The tradition was already there, and I just kind of fall into it. It makes a people who's with their mouth drawn near and their heart is far from him. Amen. That's what it does, Brother Given. In my lifetime, this happened. But there's a man that come up with a five-finger exercise on how to be saved. <laughs> And that was standardized, yep. and a whole religious movement adopted right. that little childish 
five finger yeah, eggs. That's right. That's right. It's a routine, see? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So yep. people didn't think about he will be a join to the Lord. That's not, that's not how they thought about becoming a Christian. Join to the Lord or called into the fellowship of just like, That's not how they thought about salvation. They thought about salvation in connection with that five-finger exercise. Now, now, don't think I'm just harping on something or this is some kind of soapbox or I'm just complaining. This is the kind of stuff that Paul is laboring against. But he... This is, this is very calculated. This is more than calculated. This is inspired. This text is inspired. That the, the Father, God the Father in heaven is telling humanity all of this that you need, all of this actually that you really want. A lot of people don't realize what it is that they really want. That, that integrated hunger that's like built into man. It's for God, and people don't realize that it's for God. And that the way that hunger is satisfied is in Christ. It's in Christ Jesus, and it's in a man. Brother Tony. Uh, Paul, you know, he'd been called out of the greatest religious system there was. That's right. And he was called out God of that. God ordained system. Right, yeah. He was called out of that and put in Christ Jesus. So right. he knew that everything that satisfies a man that was the answer. Christ Jesus, the man Christ right. Jesus. Amen. That's what he's trying to get across. So that, and you're exactly right. That's what he's fighting against. Yes, that's All right. along, a religious system crept into Galatia. All, it was in a car, car everywhere. That's what he, he wor that's what he worried about, so to speak, yeah. when he was leaving. After I leave, yeah. you know. Amen. And and there, yes. Yeah. You remember what that Colossians where he warned him about philosophizers and so forth? And then he gives the, he tells you why they are the way they are, verse 19, and not holding the head. Right. Yeah, amen. Right. In yep. order to adopt the, in order to adopt that philosophy and routine, they had to leave amen. the head, let go of the head. Amen. Yep. Amen. That's right. So the <clears throat> now there, there's a there's an inclination in mankind toward a a routine or a a predefined system. There's a there's a comfort, there's a level of comfort in that. But see, when you come to Jesus says, in contrast to that, Jesus says, if any man come to me, if any man would be my disciple, he has to deny himself and take up his cross. That means Jesus, his will has to trump ours. His desire replaces our desire. We deny ourselves and then take up our cross. A cross is something to die on. You know, our culture, <clears throat> I think this is rather subtle, uh, people refer to a, a cross as some um, overt burden, like a failing business, or a, an obvious physical handicap. That's a, that's a great cross. It, a cross is something to die on. This is the cross. Take up your cross. Is that, that is, the, that is the, um, the, the effect of denying yourself. It's, it's kind of like um, the same two things in, or saying the same thing in two different ways. Deny yourself, take up your cross. It's, it's put him first and die to yourself. That's what, he, that's what he's saying. The world, the world, it, it operates by systems. That's, that's how the world operates. The world could never operate like the kingdom of God does. You have pandemonium, see? But the kingdom of God can't operate like the world does because that would create pandemonium. So they're two completely different systems. Yes. This, is, this is why Jesus said what he did about the Holy Spirit. He says, the, so are they that are born of the Spirit. He says, the wind bloweth where, it, bloweth where it listeth. You can't tell where it's coming from, where it's going. So is everyone born of the Spirit. It's because those that are born of the Spirit, they're living by His life. They're living in His life. This is not something that can be documented and, and written out in a protocol. It, it's, it's not that way. It's His. you got to follow the shepherd wherever He goes. And you can't predict where He goes by a protocol and by a policy and by a system. You can't do it. And so that's why you know, the, the wind is a mystery. You see where you can't tell where it's at. You just see what it's doing. But other than that, you can't, you can't control it. You can't document it. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. One, one more point on this, and then we're actually going to get to the text. World systems, and when I say world systems, I'm talk, we're talking about a religious garb. World systems can be used, leveraged, and exploited. 
a system can be exploited. So if there's always there's always holes in a system. There's always loopholes. There's always a way that a person a person can get personal gain out of a system that was actually it wasn't it wasn't set up for them personally, but they can they can leverage it. And this this can happen in a in a very unseen um not always unseen, but like in a very uh, um, almost hidden way. Unperceived. Un- unperceived, right. They're like them that, that, that creep in or in their un- unawares and this, this kind of thing. That's what can happen with a system, but it can't happen with a man. That's right. Not with, with this man whose eyes are as a flame of fire. He, know, he tells you your thoughts before you know your thoughts. No leveraging here. No exploiting here. You got to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. So now we're going to conclude with the text. Um, and I just, I, I intended for this to be, you know, this, this high, broad uh, flyover. And there's, there's, there's advantage of that, you know. There, there's, um, there's advantage of like sitting, sitting down on, on a word, you know, or sitting down in, in a text and kind of, kind of digging straight down right there but then there's a there's a high level high view as well so i just want to um comment briefly on several of these statements through this text that highlight that everything in the kingdom has been given over to christ verse 13 says we've been translated to the kingdom of his dear son it's a it's the kingdom of a man it's given over to him he is the king the king of kings the kingdom is his he's the one on the throne it's not a protocol power is given to him he's in fact he's not the only one with power he's the only one with all power and everyone else who has power it was given by him and can be taken by him there is no power but that is of god all power is given by him and for him we, we glory, people glory in our country that power is distributed. <laughs> it's distributed. But we, I glory that power is localized in, the, in, in him. It's all in him. His kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son, needs no checks and balances. It doesn't need any. It all is focused in him. Verse 14 says, in whom we have redemption. Who can forgive sins but God only? See, it's in him that we have redemption, even the forgiveness of our sins. Not only did Jesus pay the the price of redemption, Jesus is redemption. Made unto us redemption. So not only did he pay an unimaginable price, he is the price. Pay with his his own blood. He forgave, see, God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. Because he is, he is the redemption. Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? This is why Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's the image of the invisible God. <clears throat> what, do you, what, what does God think of merchants in his temple? We know. Because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. How does God respond to a woman or any person weeping over their sin? We know. Because Jesus is the image of of the invisible God. How does God speak to a Samaritan woman who was who was shunned and rejected by the Jewish people? But how does God speak to that person? We know, because He Jesus is the image of the invisible God. What are God's thoughts over family feuds and strifes about money? We know. We know what what God Jesus is the image of the invisible God. How does God respond to a centurion who's not a Jew, but has great faith? How does God respond to that? We know. He's the, if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. He's, now, <clears throat> Jesus is what God looks like as a man. Not, not visually. This is what, he, this is what the, the life from heaven looks like when it's deposited in the earth. This is what heavenly, look, heavenly life looks like in the earth. Because Jesus is the image. Amen. The image. So don't think of this image as like a painting. 
It's not that kind of image, not like a painting. Think of God creating man in his image. Jesus is the fullness of that image, the image of the invisible God. <clears throat> Verse 16, all things created by him and for him. He created the world that he would enter into. He entered into his creation. He created the world in which he would come to do the will of God. He built the stage. And now he's on it, in it, created by him and for him. His creation responded to his birth with a star. Remember that? His star. It was created for him. And the sea, the, the, the storm at sea obeyed him. The foal that he rode that had never been ridden before, it, obeyed, it submitted to him. That fit, All the fish came to the, to the net at his call two times. The water held him up as he walked on it. The, it's, it was created for him. Yeah. It's, still, it's still for him. It's serving him. Remember in the Revelation? The earth helped the woman. Flow, uh, swallowed up the flood. The earth helped the woman. Don't you think the earth is still helping the woman? The earth is still helping his people because it is, was created for him. Amen. That changes the way you think about things. Yeah, see, Satan's anger is swallowed up by the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's how he was right. the moment there, yeah. That's right. All things were created by him and for him. Amen. Verse 17, by him all things consist. Creating the world was not the end of the matter. He's also the sustainer mm -hmm. of the world. <clears throat> he's still yet today upholding all things by the word of his power. Amen. The predictable rising and setting of the sun is evidence of Jesus' faithfulness to God. Amen. The, every time you see, even the world can predict the time that the sun will rise and the time that the sun will set, that's because Jesus is sustaining it. Amen. He is by him all things consist. The perfect distance of the, from the earth to the sun not too close to burn up, not too far away to freeze over. The perfect orbiting is because Jesus is, all things are consisting in him. Amen. Without, without this sustaining of Jesus, of the, whole, of the whole universe, the slightest change could, would destroy the earth. It's too close to the sun, it all burns up. You think, you think they're talking about global warming. Now, too far away and it, and it, and it freezes. He, all things consist by him. <clears throat> He's the head of the body. Head of the body. Authority, yes, but more than authority. The head of the body. He has authority over all things. Yeah. He's the, the body. He is the head of the body, the source of life, the source of desire, the source of thought and cognition, the, force, the source of understanding, the source of sobriety, the source of strength, the source of life. He's the head. He's the head of the body. No one lives without their head. Jesus is much more than the boss of the church. He's the head of the church. I think we'll close there. <clears throat> and I hope you're able to, uh, to, to see the, the, the heart of, of God in giving this inspired word. It's like this is the, this is the, way, this is the way the kingdom is established that it's all been given over to Christ, and whoever hears him and whoever comes to him, they have access to all of it. Amen. Now, Amen. what a glory and what a mercy it is that the Lord's actually opened this up, yeah. Yeah. that he's actually made this known. Amen. What if Jesus had shown up in the world, did what he did, said what he said, and left, and then this inspiration was never given, and Jesus really was just an historical figure. See, You see how that would... Let us eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. But praise the Lord <clears throat> that Christ has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for Jesus that you sent him. We thank you for the work that, that he did in the earth, the work that he finished, and we thank you for the work that he's now doing at your right hand. We pray, Lord, that you would give us grace to abide in him. Uh, that when he appears, we may be confident and not be ashamed uh, before him. Uh, we pray, Lord, that as we wait for him, that you would uh, give us uh, grace and give us power, Lord, to preach Christ, to preach Christ crucified. 
uh, that <clears throat> we would uh, minister to all of your people in preaching Christ, uh, that those outside would be drawn by the preaching of Christ, uh, that all the brethren would be nourished by the preaching of Christ. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would give us grace to fix our eyes on Jesus as we run this race, and we pray this in his name. Amen.